The MCA Hammerhead has always been a crowd favourite here at World Time Attack. It's gone through a couple of changes of ownership and it's here now as Tanuki. We're here with David from GT Auto Garage to talk a little bit about the car and specifically the changes that have been made. So David, for a start, the most obvious change here, the engine. It was SR20 VE Turbo, it's not anymore. What made you go down the path of the VR38? It all came about with, um, it's more of a reliability. Um, the, you know, the SR is lighter, it, can make decent, really good horsepower, but we were lot wanting, as this year is, we wanted to dual drive, so the owner Wayne have him in pro am, and then obviously Tim Slade driving pro. Um, so that way, you know, with a VR 4.1, it um, we can run 25 pounds all day basically with a, you know, it's unstressed. So. And that's the thing I think a lot of people would not really be aware of. You know, these engines are making a thousand plus horsepower, or give or take, there, yeah. there are thereabouts. Yes. And uh, you know, we see these numbers thrown around like they don't really mean too much. But getting that power reliably out of a two or two point two liter four cylinder engine, no matter what you're putting in it, billet block or not, it's yeah. hard work, right? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you can have everything under the sun, but you're on the edge of a four cylinder. It's a lot of boost, and it's a lot of you know everything stressed. So ultimately the VR38, well now 4.1 litre version of the VR38, you've just got more capacity, you're making that power with much less boost, much less stress on the engine. Yeah, yeah, we run 28 pounds max and yeah. And ultimately what, what power are you producing now and how does that compare to where it was with the SR20? I'm not too sure where they ended up with the SR, I think they were close to the 1100, I'm not, I don't know, but um, we're at 1080 at 25 pounds. I would assume then that there's a little bit more left uh, up your sleeve if you needed it? Yes. Oh yeah, of course. You always have to leave. You know, you want the reliability where Jill entered the car. So we want to make sure that, you know, we can do the most over a long... It's a long weekend. Like, yeah, we're doing only one or two laps, but it's a long weekend still. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, in terms of getting that power reliably out of the 4.1 VR38, I mean, obviously at 4.1 litres it's incorporating a stroker kit. Yeah. What else is needed inside that engine to, to make that sort of power reliably? Um, it's pretty, actually the motor's pretty basic in all honesty in, in the scheme of what's available now. Like the motor was built six years ago now. Um, so yeah, so the bottom end's pretty much other than crank rods, pistons. Like it's, it's got um, CNC heads on it, but the actual bottom end, there's no billet mains, there's no, there's nothing special at the moment. Hence why it is a little bit dialed down. So we want to keep it reliable. But I mean, obviously we see these engines and roll race and drag applications making two and a half thousand horsepower yeah. plus with billet blocks. But yeah, you know, obviously you're, you're not there. Uh, turbo sizing, can you talk about what's fitted to it? Yeah, so there's just a GT, uh, GT1000 kit from HKS. It's a, literally a factory streetcar bolt-on kit. And we went that route for because it's a very tight engine bay. We um, it's really compact kit. In terms of the difference in weight and a weight balance front to rear versus the SR20, I, I would imagine you're taking a bit of a hit there with the VR38. Yeah, we did. We yeah, it's like the balance we lost about four percent on the nose, but what we make up in torque outdoes the weight balance issue. Yeah. Another big change is the electronics package. Back in the MCA Hammerhead days, it was running the Autronic ECU. You've switched to the MoTeC platform. Can you talk us through uh, why you've gone that route? Um, we, are, as a GD Auto, we run predominantly all MoTeC systems, um, and we've got the GPR Pro in this one. Um, again, with monster amount of torque, like from 3,000, it's um, a must in all honesty to control the amount of torque for Tim to drive it to his 100%. Can you give us a, a high level overview of what that GPR Pro uh, package allows in terms of torque management? It allows basically everything. Like you can, um, from like your second gear low stuff, you can like, yeah, you can give it 500 newton meters at, at like two grand, or you can up it to a thousand newton meters, like wherever you need it. Um, it also incorporates your, you know, there's a tire friction model within that as well. There's, yeah, there's a heap of like, I guess, driver aids and car aids to really support everything. And we've got we've got a couple of videos on that GPR Pro and the the torque based model and the traction model. Yeah. So if people want to dive into a bit more, we'll we'll link to those as well. Yeah. Other changes to the car, the aero package yep. uh, looks a little bit different, particularly in the front end. Talk us through that. It basically to to be brutally honest, it was to rebrand the car. Like 
if we left what was on it, everyone would just, you know, it's the same, it's the same. So we had to reinvent the car basically. Um, and Andrew Brilliant, which I've worked with since um, when I was tuning Nemo back way back when, when it all broke the rules. So um, yeah, been working with Andrew since then. We, um, yeah, so this, we got him on board and to redesign the front end. I mean, the obvious one there is the uh, infinity wing. So the, the front end is a, a lot narrower than the hammerhead. Obviously, yep. it was named the hammerhead for, for, a for a reason. I, I guess the other element that comes in here, you, you've got a car that's gone through a couple of changes of ownership. It yep. was very, very well known and re really successful as the MCA hammerhead. Yep. Does that then create a, a bit of pressure on the team to uh, sort of at least match or exceed its previous performance? Yeah, 100%. Well, like our, when we first took ownership in January this year, we... As a, a crew briefing, we wanted to beat the original lap record of the car. And yesterday we, we went half a second faster. So we're so it's worked. stoked, yeah, 100% stoked. Uh, what, what is that lap time that you're down to at the moment? 120.45, yeah. So there's a 19 in it today maybe? The way the conditions are today, we're pretty pretty happy. Well, we're pretty, uh, we're, we're thinking we're close, yeah. Uh, in terms of that, we're, we're here, it's uh, early morning on the Saturday, which is the big day at World Time Attack. It's pretty cool this morning. Yes. Obviously, as the day goes on, the temperature increases. Yep. Uh, from a, a running perspective, what's the ideal conditions? Do you want that cooler temperature for the engine? How does it affect the, the grip as the, the track heats up? Yeah, it, um, it oh man, yeah, it, um, with the temperatures, like obviously we've got a full brand new PWR cooling package in it. Um, the temps in the car don't really fluctuate during the day. Yeah, there's a five, six degree change depending on midday temps. Um, but again, yeah, grip um, grip levels obviously will suffer, um, especially towards the end of the lap. But um, so far, again, we not haven't really found the limit of that yet. Um, you know, new build, so first year out and uh, yeah. I suppose that is actually something that's probably worth mentioning here is that the car hasn't had a lot of testing up to this point. So sort of World Time Attack has almost become a, a shakedown. Yeah, well, we've done, we've, we've literally done, oh, what are we now, 40 laps up in Queensland. Like we have done some testing, but not here. Like, you know, Sydney Motorsport Park's a different animal. You know, Queensland Raceway is pretty basic. Um, so yeah, so this is literally its first major shakedown. Yeah. Uh, one, one big change to the rules for this year in 2023 is the move away from the dot uh, control tyre yeah. to a full slick. What's the learning curve been like with that? I mean, I know talking to drivers and teams in the past, the, the dot control tyre was really good for three quarters of a lap and then it was sort of overheat and, and really start to go away dramatically. It was yeah. only good for that one lap at best. On a full slick, obviously, you, you've got the ability to, to do more laps back to back. So is, is there a process more about getting the tyre up to optimal operating temperature? So pre previously, as I understand it, I mean, I haven't driven here on those tyres, yeah. but the, the driver would have to sort of creep around the outlap, basically not putting too much energy into the tyre so it yeah. didn't overheat. And then sort of coming out of the last turn onto the front straight, it was like all on. Yeah. And then, you know, try and nurse it through a full lap. Yeah. So yeah. with the slick, is there a different process to that? Well, yeah, we run tyre warmers. So, okay, yeah. so it's always up to temperature as yeah. you're rolling up pit yeah, lane. Correct, yeah, so then they, the, the driver only has to worry about your brake temps and yeah, yeah, still getting obviously temps into your rims, etc. But yeah, like tyre warmers obviously help a lot. <laughs> Alright, look, thanks for the insight into the car, David. Uh, it is a crowd favourite, it's one of our favourites and uh, we hope you can go a little bit faster at sub 120 today. Uh, best of luck. Yeah, thank you very much.
like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.